Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is Kenny Jang with the Church Butler Lunch and Learn podcast. I'm happy to be here today talking about social media for churches. I've got my friend here, Brandon Swain, with me. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Uh, thanks for having me, Kenny. It's been a great pleasure to meet you and to do this podcast. So it's pretty awesome. I love it. So before we get started, why don't you just share with all of us a little bit about what you do for your day job and your ministry that you're involved with for uh, with the ministry resources? Yeah. So um, my basically my ministry is my day job, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the ministry I work for called Four Ministry Resources is a uh, church tech ministry that helps churches leverage uh, social media and technology uh, to get the best impact that they possibly can online and make a good online impact. Um, and uh, so I do that for about, you know, almost 40 hours a week. And then I do, um, I'm a youth pastor at Lakeshore Baptist Church in Cicero, New York, right outside of Syracuse. Um, and that's kind of my part-time job. So really I get to do full-time ministry all the time. So it's pretty awesome. That's blessed. pretty cool. Yeah. So let's talk about your youth ministry aspect of your vocation. What age group are you um, carrying over? Uh, we have we have a pretty uh, diverse age group. We have a lot of we actually have a lot of older students that are in like uh, college age, but then we have so it's like there's like no middle ground. There's like one extreme or the other. So it's like college age students high, uh, and seniors in high school, and then it's like uh, um, you know early on high school like leaving junior high so like you know uh um like 10th grade uh, 9th 10th grade stuff like that so there's really no middle ground between them so yeah that's basically the um the demographic that we have in our in that yeah. ministry so so yeah. i'm assuming that part of your day or part of your tool set is social media right you are actually communicating directly with students or publishing on social so that they consume it yes yes sir all the time man i like that's like my wife will get on me all the time. She's like, what are you doing on Facebook? And I'm like, I'm doing, I'm working. I promise you, I'm working. <laughs> so it's kind of hard. I had to convince her and promise her I'm doing stuff. But yeah. That's uh, funny. So what what channels or platforms is your church embracing right now for social media? Uh, we just started Instagram, but we ba- our biggest platform right now is Facebook. Um, but we just started Instagram a couple weeks ago, uh, and that's been doing pretty well. We're getting slow but steady followers, so that's been great. Um, and then uh, for the youth ministry, we use Instagram and Snapchat. I'm about to cut Facebook from the youth ministry because none of my students use it. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm about to just say, you know, I'm not going to worry about trying to post content to that to that platform anymore for the youth ministry. I'm just going to focus on Instagram and Snapchat. So. Yeah, Facebook has become uh, middle school for 40-year-olds, as I say, right? Oh, yeah, and, for real. Yeah. And um, it, to the kids, it's really like what LinkedIn is to a lot of adults, right? They know they should yeah. have an account there for existence, but uh, it's not something that they go and use uh, yeah. to really connect with their friends. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So let's talk about Snapchat in particular. Um, recently, I was in a uh, epic discussion battle with my friend Neil Smith, um, who runs the Social Media Church podcast with Jay Cranda of Saddleback. And uh, one of the things that we've been going back and forth is the prediction in this next year for 2017 for Snapchat itself and its relevance to culture. Um, yeah. Nils is, is predicting the demise of Snapchat. I'm saying that Snapchat is healthy, robust. It's in a leadership position. Um, where do you weigh in on that, Brandon? Uh, I would swing to your side, Kenny. Uh, I mean, a lot. I saw a lot of people <laughs> uh, not to be. What do they call? What do they call that when the election was going on? Those like uh, opinion vacuums, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. But uh, not to be like the, one of those kind of people. But um, I would definitely weigh on in. And on your side, and a lot of people were saying when it, when it, when uh, Facebook Stories went live, like everyone was like, "Oh man, Snapchat's dead! Snapchat's dead!" And I was like, and me being a youth pastor, I was like, "There's no way," because I talk to my students all the time, and I'm just like, you know, hey, I'm posting Instagram stories and like stuff on our Instagram, like my youth group's Instagram, and they're like, "Why? Why do you do that? We don't like. I don't like watching Instagram stories." And and I know for a fact, like when when Facebook uh, those stories. Uh, hit they were just like Ugh. like I, I remember like hearing the the conversations between them like Ugh. and that's like that's the biggest demographic right now especially for you know youth pastors and stuff obviously so you know and they're not the, and uh because of that because of that too i think those that younger generation is so loyal like just think about you know think back when like myspace was still big and like when i was a young kid in high school like around the age of my students were and like facebook went live 
I was like, or Facebook started to gain some momentum. I was like so hell bent on not joining Facebook because I was so loyal to MySpace. Yeah. And I think yeah. that is the same thing we're going to see with Snapchat because this younger generation, the younger millennial, the, uh, the younger uh, student age are still so loyal to Snapchat. They're not going to jump off of uh, using Snapchat stories yeah. or anything like that. So, so yeah. what, what are your youth actually using Snapchat for? I think one of the problem, one of the big problems is that the older generations, the parents and teachers, et cetera, don't understand what Snapchat is in the life of a teen. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a little bit from your perspective? You know, is it just, uh, you know, people look, I think people look at it almost like um, just a place to be vain and yeah. kind of like how people look at Instagram as a place to just share where, what you're eating. They yeah. look at it as, as frivolous. It's not part of their life, really. What, how, do, how are youth using Snapchat today? Um, I said they're using it to document their life. I mean, it, that's what I see all the time. Like, and I love, and I love that aspect about my students that they share what's going on in their day, not just what they're eating, because that's like the, the stereotype, the faux pas kind of thing. But they're just like saying, like, "Hey, I'm hanging out with this person," or like, um, one student of mine posted a uh, w one of my other students like went and got her like a drink from a gas station, and she was just like so happy, like, "Oh my!" And I posted a selfie, and like, you just see those kind of moments, and I think they're really just trying to, just trying to. Um, you know, share life with other with the other the other people in their age age groups and stuff like that. And I think it's it's more or less just not being vain. It's documenting the stuff that happens in your day, which some people might say is bad too. You know, it's like, oh you're constantly on your phone documenting everything that's going on. But at the same time it's like, no, that's you know, what happens when you go into a group of people, you tell them the good stuff that happened to your day. You know, when I end my day here doing stuff with FMR, I tell my wife what happened. And so but now Snapchat's kinda Snapchat's kind of bridged that link. Now, no longer do you have to see people to tell them what happened, but you can yeah. send them a story or a snap and say, hey, look what's happening right now. This is so cool, you know? So I think that's what, um, um, I think that's definitely what my students are using it for. That's what I use it for, to show them bits and pieces of my day, show them my daughter, you know, when I'm <laughs> messing around with her. So, yeah. It's creating community that does not have, you, when you don't have to be together. That's basically what it is. And I think that's nice, nice, uh, yeah. So, um, how are you using it? Are you using it just to broadcast things, or are you using it for direct messaging individuals? Because it's one of the things that people find hard about Snapchat is that it's not like email where you can just broadcast and spam everybody every day. Yeah, um, I'm using it just to kind of uh, share stuff what's happened, like because my students like to see like what's going on in my day and stuff like that. So I'm using that, and I just use the story feature. Like I don't send them like everything that's going on because they i did that once and they were like you gotta stop this <laughs> so like um so i was just like you know because whatever but <laughs> so i just use the story feature but yeah i use it to you know show them share them my day and sometimes i'll um uh just use it to text them uh like you know i'll see something about their day and i was like hey how'd that go you know and like just shoot them a quick little uh text in the snap and the um in the feed and sometimes i'll even uh video chat them because I didn't even know that until a couple months ago that Snapchat had the video chat feature. So like just for like a quick video chat real quick, like, you know, instead of calling them, just like shoot, you know, shoot them video chat or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically in some announcements. I mean, that's still like what's going on, but I try to get creative with it. Like I always use filters uh, to relay the announcements to some crazy thing just to make it fun. But that's that's like on a rarest of occasions. But the most most time most of the time, I'm just like saying like, hey, you know, like what I'm learning today. Sometimes um, from my devotions and stuff like that. And I've seen pastors they do devotions on their Snapchat. Like they'll post like the verses and then like a little comment about them and stuff like that. And uh, I've tried doing that with some of my teens and just sending them privately and to say, you know, hey, like I'm, you know, this verse came up. I'm thinking about you. You know, praying for you and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so. It's a, again, it's a great way to be a pastor without being, you know, physically present in their lives. So I think it's um, that's you know the advantages I see from it. So. so talking about your youth population in terms of efficiency of choosing a platform, what percentage of your students are actually on Snapchat? Hundred percent. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, what about Facebook? Um, I would say that would go down uh, to about. 70 percent i know there's gotcha. a couple of students that are not on facebook at all and then what about instagram uh, i think that would go back to 100 percent. 
Gotcha. So the youth, I mean, you're confirming what's out there, right? Is that the youth today all are on Snapchat or Instagram. That's where they go first. They're not on email. They're not on Facebook. Um, they are on Snapchat. So are you using other mediums to get to a student? If you wanted to get to a student, what is the channel that you would, you know, would you call them first? Would you snap them first? Instagram, Facebook mm-hmm. Messenger, um, texting. What would you use first to get to a student? Uh, I would say Snapchat, <laughs> again, just because, like, uh, um, I have, like, chats open all the time sometimes, you know, and they, they message me back and forth, like, asking, like, they'll ask me questions on Snapchat. So, like, like, the other day, this one particular student who has my number decided instead of, Instead of uh, texting me or calling me, she Snapchat she Snapchatted me and just asked me a question about an, an event that was coming up. So then that told me I was like, oh well, that's what they check the most. So like when I have to relay information, I'll just you know if it's to a particular person, I'll just go to my Snapchat and send a Snap story or send a text real quick through Snapchat, and then I'll go to Facebook Messenger if if no nice. one if I know someone isn't. Uh, on Snapchat or, or if they're not checking their Snapchat at all. Yeah, I, I think it's important to hear from a practitioner like you that that's literally how you think when you're trying to communicate with the youth because so much of the discussion out there is academic and they don't understand in real world that our youth in real time are on Snapchat. Um, yeah. Now, do you have any of these uh, streaks with uh, yeah. people? Can, can you explain what that is? And I think that's one of the one of the hooks that Snapchat has to to mm-hmm. have it as a app of choice over some others for youth. Yeah, actually, me and Jackson, and it's me, Jackson, and my wife that have streaks right now. Uh, well, not right now. We actually lost our streaks, but usually, me, Jackson, and my wife are like. So, what's a streak? A streak is um, when you send a Snapchat every single day to somebody. So within like 24 hours, like you send someone else, the same person, a snap. Um, and basically, so you accumulate the, you just have to send one a day uh, to kind of add to your streak. And so like some of my students have gotten like 200 uh, streaks before, like they're like all about it. And I was like, to me, like as an older, as an older, like an older adult, like I guess, um, even though I'm 24, but like, I, I seem old to these, to these students, but like. <laughs> Uh, to me, I'm just like, wow, that's so pointless. Because I was like, it's because literally they, to get these streaks, they send just like a blank picture and just say streak yes. or something yes. like that. And I'm just like, what? That's it? Like that's all you do? And they're like, yeah, it's awesome. And I was like, okay. And like, so like, I just didn't understand it when I first started learning about that more and more. And then I was like, wow, that really matters to them. So yeah, I mean, again, that's that's one of the reasons why. Young adults are opening up Snapchat every single day, right? Yeah. They're, what they're trying to do is maintain these streaks and that they're pulling, they're even just, they're just literally, it's almost like an admin function, right? They're just trying to go through and, and snap back a picture or a message to every single one they're trying to maintain a streak with. And it's kind of like a badge of honor, but yeah. it also is a little bit of an indication of how many friends you really have and how many friends, how, who the people are your closest friends, right? That inner circle that yeah. you're keeping streaks with. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and you know they celebrate all the time. Like you see, you see those celebrate celebratory ones that are just like hundred hundred streak day or something like that. And like, yeah, that's it. Really, is a badge of honor. It's like um, I can't. I wish I could have equated something, but it was like um, for me, you know, when I was a kid, it was like collecting the most Pokemon cards, almost <laughs> like, and I was just like, you know, to me that was awesome, and like you know, to other people it probably had no. Uh, relevance like to my mom and dad they're like okay you're stupid why are we spending so much money on pokemon cards um but you know so that's kind of like the relevance there you know like take you know when you were a kid whatever you collected it's like the new collecting because it's like yes. they're collecting streaks but it's a, but but it has this relational component to it that's which i think exactly. is very interesting yeah um, and they yeah and they and they and they spawn you know and then not even that day is that, um, you know, I know some of my students, sorry to interrupt you, but some of my students, they'll send that streak pic, and then they'll they'll continue to talk to that person for the rest of the day. Like, so it's yeah. just like, yeah, it's like, hey, we're sharing our day together. That's, and I think that's awesome, you know, especially in my youth group where they're so tight-knit and, they, like, they're sharing their days with one another. I think that's really cool. That's awesome. So for someone who's going to jump into Snapchat, you've got a, a, a large population that's on Snapchat. Um, what's what, what's the first thing that someone should try to master or understand about Snapchat? What's the first thing that you would recommend if you were, you know, if you had a new staffer, either an intern or someone that you're taking under your wings as a mentor? Um, what would you try to teach them? 
Uh, I would just say, uh, man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, cause there's like, for me, like, I don't really see it as like something that could be mastered cause there's no like rhyme or reason to it. Cause so like Instagram and Facebook have like analytics and they have data and like, you can see all the stuff. I mean, Snapchat has a, a small amount of data. You can see how many people viewed your story, but you can't see how many people actually liked your story unless they send you like a comment. No, I'm talking about function yeah. wise. Is it, is it direct messaging? Is it stories? What is it? Oh. Filters? What, what, I what's the, yeah, no, I, yeah, I understand. I'm sorry. I misunderstood the question, but no, I would say definitely uh, the story feature, um, story. story, stories and filters, because I think that's what, because there's not a whole lot of direct Snapchat to Snapchat going on. Um, at least what I've seen is that, you know, you have those younger students that are sending, you know, the streaks and stuff like that. And there's like, but those, the people that they continue the streaks on with and the people that they continue talking to the rest of the day are their close friends. So like yes. you only direct Snapchat somebody who you like really know very well. Um, and because uh, um, it'd be weird to get like a Snapchat from like anybody that watching me right now. <laughs> it's just be like strange, like, uh, okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely stories because that's where your main content's going to go. That's where, you know, where, where people are going to watch even if they don't know you. They'll still check out that, that part. So I definitely say master stories. Um, and there's some, and the way to master stories would be through filters because that's like the best thing right now. Um, you know, just messing with filters. And if you have a pastor, man, if you're like, if you're a social media manager and you have a pastor and you guys have a Snapchat account, even if you're a youth pastor and you're managing a Snapchat account for your youth ministry, put a filter on somebody, put yeah. a filter on your pastor, put a filter on uh, yourself and just be, and just be goofy and be crazy. And I think that's, um, that's the draw of Snapchat is that you don't have to be plan You don't have to be super planned out. You don't have to say like, okay, we're going to, this is our schedule for Snapchat. It's like, you know, hey, like, let's put a filter on this pa on our pastor and have yeah, yeah. voice, and that's Definitely. and that's what's good. And people are going to consume that and like enjoy it, and not just say, you know, not just be another thing they scroll past on their feed because, um, you know, people love seeing people in dog face filters. So, <laughs> well, I think what happens yeah. is it humanizes everybody and makes you accessible, right? That's basically what's going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's personal. Hey, so what what about geo filters? Have you had any experience with geo filters with your church? Uh, I've had a bad experience with geo, geo filters. <laughs> but, uh, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I was trying to get one of the free community ones set up, and uh, I was trying so hard. I, I, I mean, I put off the logos and everything, and you know, I tried to make it from scratch and just did like you know simple ones, and I got denied and denied, denied, denied. And uh, and I, I finally realized that Snapchat's not going to let me do it because my because the church is too small. And uh, I think they they just realized that it wouldn't be it probably wouldn't co it probably would cost them more money in the long run to put it up there than me just to have for, to have it for free and everything. So I think uh, for for us um, paying for for filters goes very well. And I think that's and they're affordable. They're not um, they're not like you know crazy amounts of money. I mean, uh, so I think I think Jackson even got uh, he was telling me about a snap, a filter that he got for like five bucks just for a youth youth seminars conference. And really, uh, filters are the best thing, the best way to market on Snapchat. I mean, because when you uh, when you have a filter, and if you have if you're around any youth at all, um, as soon as you go to a new place, and even myself, like when I go to a new place and I'm taking Snapchats, I flip, I you know, I swipe left and look at, for those filters, man, because it's so cool to see the different things that people designed in that community to be put up on Snapchat. Um, and you know, like I'm, I live in Rochester. I mean, I live in, uh, Syracuse, New York. So like when I go to Ro Rochester has the best one, I think, or no Buffalo does. They have really cool ones. They have like a Buffalo wing and stuff like that. Um, so it's like cool to see those things. Um, so it's cool to be like, you feel like a part of a bigger community when you're using those filters. And also, um, you know, when a church uses a filter and you have like people coming into your service and stuff. And like right now we're telling a lot of our churches that we partner with to, like use, snapchat filters for easter um because you know when you're when especially my youth and i encourage my youth to snap during service because yeah. you know i want them to see because they have hundreds and hundreds of friends on their snapchat feed i was like do it like snapchat the snapchat the worship because uh when you do that and they post on their story hundreds of those kids are going to see it and they're going to see wow that person's going to church and when you have a filter and you say like Easter at, you know, Lakeshore Baptist, you know, all that stuff. And you have those things, people are going to see that and like, wow, man, this, you know, such and such is here. That looks really cool. Look at that filter, you know, all that stuff, all that stuff comes into it. And basically you pay five bucks 
you tell all of your youth that you have a filter set up, they're all going to use it. So yeah, that means like your, your reach just like triple double just with $5. If you know, that's what you can get that Snapchat filter for, for a couple hours. Um, and you can, you know, cross post that to Facebook and stuff like that to let people know that it's there and uh, cross post to Instagram and everything else and stuff like that. But, you know, just, just for that fact alone that, you know, people, you know, cause you, like, like we said at the beginning, the youth are still loyal to Snapchat. They're going to use that filter. I mean, especially if it's, you know, an awesome one that you design and stuff like that, and especially one they feel like it's part of their community and they feel, um, because, you know, the younger generation is very community driven, very yeah. you know, loyal to their community. So if they're, if they're, if they're really sold out to your community at your church and you have a filter, you know, that's, I mean, I just, for me, my mind just like explodes when I think about that. Cause it's just like, you know, it's just, to me, the possibilities are endless. Um, that's uh, that's yeah. totally awesome. Yeah. And uh, for the uh, listeners today, we've got a free step-by-step guide with uh, screenshots and everything on how to set up a Snapchat geo filter for your church. It's available on our site, on our blog at butler.church, www.butler.church. Um, you can download that free guide. And again, I, uh, in our experience, we've seen the affordability um, there as well because you are basically setting a geo fence, right? The yeah. actual location where the Snapchat filter is available. You set it um, within the boundaries of your church or maybe a couple of blocks um, around it. And because it's such a small area, typically the cost that Snapchat gives you is really affordable, $5, $10 for um, a couple hours or half a day or something. So yeah. Um, it's definitely something that we recommend on our side as well. I'm glad that you've got some positive uh, traction out of that as well. Yeah. Um, any, as we close out this lunch and learn, any other departing tips for people to watch out for Snapchat since it's never going to go away, at least not in 2017? <laughs> um, any, uh, that's, let me think. I'm not, because uh, there was something new that just happened that I was really excited about. Now I forgot what it was I had in my mind. Well, why don't you, as this last one, why don't you weigh in? Facebook just came out with copycat features, which uh, I, <laughs> I love how now in 2017, when you copy, that's actually what we call innovation. Yeah. So as Facebook has innovated and copycatted uh, the stories feature, there's Facebook stories and the Facebook day, um, what, what do you think about that? Do you think that people are going to be replicating the same story on every single platform or are they going to choose one and if they do choose one do you think the youth are going to stay loyal to snapchat or are they going to start to do um you know curation of stories on facebook and on snapchat um i think the youth are going to stick to one uh, but i certainly hope people do not post all their same stories on all across <laughs> all three platforms because then i will stop following you because that's yeah, that's annoying yeah. Yeah, because my rule of thumb is, like, I try to use both Instagram and Snapchat. Um, so, like, I'll post on Snapchat and post – like, I'll post something different on Snapchat and then post different. something different on Instagram. Yeah. So it always has to be – it has to be different, like, because if, if it's the same, people are just going to tune you out. But I, yep. think, I, think, I, think the, I think the youth are going to stay loyal to Snapchat in the future no matter how cool Facebook is going to get because Facebook is always going to be viewed by the youth as the, as the grandma, your grandma's social media. So yep. it's like yep. – they're never so like I feel like Snapchat. They feel like as a as an oasis away from their parents and stuff like that, which is, which is I think is a good thing for them to have their own space. Yeah. And hey, like you know, as parents, that's kind of scary. But at the same time, if you know how, if you know what's going on in Snapchat, then it's not so scary. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, <clears throat> but I think yeah, they're gonna I think they're gonna stay there for sure because they're just their lo- their loyalty is never gonna die to that. And um, I think people and I don't even I don't even see people using a lot of Facebook stories right oh, now. Like as the the day, because like I have like a couple, like maybe one or two people post something once a day. Um, But I think, I think it's, I think Snapchat's going to stay the top for stories. And I think Instagram is going to be there. And I think Facebook's just going to be like where my grandma posts randomly once in a while on stories. (laughs) So, well, um, Brandon, thanks for, for chiming in. And thanks for giving us a practitioner's point of view in terms of youth and Snapchat's usage today. I think one of the takeaways is that people really do need to seriously look into getting involved in the platform if you especially if you have a community of youth that you want to engage with yeah Um, and i appreciate your just sharing some of the actual experiences that you guys have been going through so um, if someone wants to get in touch with you after listening to today's show how can they best get in touch with you 
Um, the best way to get in touch with me is through Facebook. You can look at look through my Facebook or Instagram at Swain3535 and at 4ministryresources.com, F-O-R, Ministry Resources. So, Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn. This video is going to be posted on our uh, Church Butler blog website. And you can and others are listening to this podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. If you're there, please drop us some comment and feedback. It's the best way to get the word out about this resource so we can help more and more church leaders across the country. I'm Kenny Jang for Church Butler. Thank you for being with us today. And we'll see you next time here at the Lunch and Learn. Thank you.